Good morning. It's Monday, July 20th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Harvest of the Earth, and our scripture is Revelation chapter 14. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this down, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, for their good deeds follow them. Then I saw a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was someone like the Son of Man. He had a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came from the temple and shouted to the one sitting on the cloud, Swing the sickle, for the time of harvest has come, the crop on earth is ripe. So the one sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the whole earth was harvested. After that, another angel came from the temple in heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel, who had power to destroy with fire, came from the altar. He shouted to the angel with a sharp sickle, Swing your sickle now to gather the cluster of grapes from the vines of the earth, for they are ripe for judgment. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and loaded the grapes into the great winepress of God's wrath. The grapes were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed from the winepress in a stream about 180 miles long and as high as a horse's bridle. Sorting out the imagery John uses may have been easier for those raised on farms. The whole issue of harvest is alien to me. The only time in my life when I tried to have a vegetable garden, I invested in seed, fertilizer, a tiller, and many days of work and watching. My so-called harvest was one sickly-looking cucumber, a couple of tiny tomatoes, and a summer squash no bigger than your pinky finger. By my math, it came out to around $48 per veggie. I went back to Food Lion the next day. John wrote that the angel thundered, The crop is ready, ripe, get the sickle. The harvest is twofold here. The first is started by the angel coming from the temple, carrying the Father's message from the throne room to Jesus, the Son of Man. He's sitting on the cloud. This image comes right after the encouragement of patience to the saints. They who die in the Lord will be in this harvest as those whom Paul wrote would be in the first resurrection. There's nothing fearful in this as it's God's promise of first fruits. After Jesus' resurrection, he told the disciples they would never be away from his presence or his providence. That includes death. That's why the scriptures refer to those who have died in Christ as sleeping. It's a picture of what will happen. Eventually, you awaken from sleep to a new day. This harvest is that day when the dead in Christ are called out of the graves. This is a harvest of life. But then there's a second angel possessing the power to destroy. The angel, not Jesus, also has a sickle for a ripe harvest. This is the time of judgment for sin. The second resurrection is a second death. Those who have rejected Christ in this life will embrace an eternity of being rejected at the judgment seat in heaven. The full weight of sin will be borne by those who choose to remain apart from Christ, the one who came to bear our sin. But for those who accept Christ's offer of forgiveness here on earth, there is no condemnation, no judgment, or punishment, they participate in the first resurrection, never to suffer or die again. Revelation 20 and verse 6, Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For them the second death holds no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will remain with him a thousand years. Let's pray together. Father, We are thankful for the promise of forgiveness and eternity of life. We are also fearful for our loved ones, our neighbors, and many around the world who are caught in unbelief. Help us to effectively carry the message of your holy child, Jesus, that others might believe and be saved. Lord, 
in your mercy. For you today, if there's one thing I do know about harvest, it's that the signs are unmistakable. To the skilled farmer or gardener, when the signs are there, it's time and there's no time to waste. God's vineyard is awaiting that harvest, some to joy in the presence of their longed for Lord, and sadly the rest to the wine press. May God have mercy and grant us all the courage to deliver this message to a world that may not have long to wait for the sickle. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road today. Have a blessed day.